So the next issue is around sediment and erosion control, and um, particularly during the construction phase, um, the whole challenge of monitoring and compliance, and how, how do you get compliance? And so just to generate a few ideas, and then again, I'd be interested, for all of your benefit, I think it would be useful to have a discussion. So. There is the power under uh, the Local Government Act to do a sediment and erosion control bylaw. And um, just after I go through these points, I'd actually like to invite um, both uh, Kevin and Derek, as well as Dean and Gary, to, to talk about their experiences in Nanaimo and in uh, Courtney. Um, but obviously, these types of bylaws set out the best management practices, set, set the bar, set the standards of what's expected as far as uh, on-site stuff. And I was reviewing uh, some of the stuff at the back there. Um, there's some really great images there of the kind of uh, best practices that one would want uh, followed. I think that as well as a bylaw, though, um, it, there's a really high uh, level of importance to be placed on training and education. Um, and. I've noted here both internal and external, and I think that it's a huge uh, learning curve as far as getting people up to speed within the municipality. So all of the folks, um, you know, that are working within all the different departments uh, around the importance of, of this issue, and then also doing training of of the development uh, community that you're working with, and again, every of the parties, so the developer, the builder, and then all the sub trades. There's a huge um, array of people that need to be trained up on what this actually means on the ground. And if you look at some of the places that have been trying to do uh, outreach and information on this stuff, there's lots of great examples. Um, you'll hear what Courtney's efforts are and Nanaimo's efforts, but I, I also know that Surrey has quite an extensive program, Township of Langley, they've all implemented bylaws. and really big components of this are generating brochures, um, doing training sessions, putting information up on the web so that people can actually see what you're talking about in terms of water quality that you want to see coming off the site as opposed to the really muddy stuff. Um, uh, how you achieve that in terms of techniques. Um, up at Simon Fraser University uh, in the city of Burnaby, uh, the Simon Fraser Community Trust is an example that I'm very familiar with, um, where they've actually, where the trust has its hands on all the development that occurs up there at university. Um, they've done a very interesting model. <laughs> they've taken it on uh, themselves to implement best practices, but then to um, do adaptive management on a moving forward basis, and so they've They've got the best management practices that they started with, and then they've been monitoring the success of those practices, and then training up. They require the contractors that are going to be working on the site to actually take a workshop session. And they do training, and they may adapt those practices based on what they learned the last time. And so it's a very effective model of uh, learning for moving forward. In terms of uh, sticks, um, Bonding is, again, another uh, way of trying to ensure and encourage people to do what they are told they need to do um, and to also train those that are under their control. Um, and then finally, uh, other you know, inspections, fines, stop work, and then finally, if damage is done, you also have the power as municipalities to actually fix the problem and charge it back to the person that, uh, that uh, did the damage in the first place. So. Those are just some ideas of the spectrum of, you know, ways of dealing with this problem. So, uh, did did you want to speak, Kevin? Sure. Or Derek? I think the slide that was just was a great example of how not to do business. <laughs> this has been a real problem for Courtney over the years with having fairly wet weather and uh, development community that's not quite up to speed yet. We're getting there. So we've done uh, sediment erosion controls. In, uh, in all of our projects, we don't have a bylaw yet. We have that put on by the consulting engineers in all subdivisions. Uh, we have public works inspector, Fred, who goes out and he sees this stuff. We act on it either by talking to the billing inspectors, asking did they see it, 
for your DRI that day, you're out from all these construction sites. Two, if you don't clean it off by sunset, we'll clean it off and we'll charge you 200 bucks an hour for the street sweeper and overtime. Um, then we get the fight of who made the mud. It doesn't matter. We have a site that came off, you've got to chase the person to the money back. Enforcement inspection, one we're working on, uh, as I mentioned, I think, at the last session, we've just changed how we do business in court. We have building control and inspection and operation services. And together with planning, we're working on this whole new management philosophy on managing development. Hopefully, we're going to get this whole package together fairly close to the end of this year so that we can actually sit down, as I talked about earlier on, with the builders in the future and not just hand a permit to them, but sit down and say, okay, your permit is to build on this property, only on the property, you manage the site, you do these things, you clean up, you look after water, mud, and all those other things, or we will stop you, your permit will be pulled. Whether we've got the tools to do that, I don't know yet. I hope you will learn that today. And maybe we're going to change our building bylaw as well to give us those tools if they're out there. Thank you. I can just add on to that. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go over the point, I'll just give you a Reader's Digest version of this. This slide is from a presentation that Kevin and I did down in, I don't know if it was in June or July or this year. It just relates to some of the best management practices around it. But what I really wanted to say is that we're in the process of putting together an erosion and sedimentation control program. And you've got to have a, you know, you've got to have a vision for this. One of the tools within that is the bylaw itself, and that's work in progress right now. But Susan hit the nail on the head. It's not a simple process. There's a lot involved in, in getting that buyer into place. There's the uh, legal part of it, going through council, making sure that you have the buy-in from your departments within the organization. Getting all of your documents together. There's a lot of documents involved in this, everything from the checklist through to the applications themselves, you get the permit if the permit is required, and then the explanatory documentation that goes out to the public, to the consultants, and so forth. One of the, um, probably two of the, um, easels at the back show two pages of the erosion sedimentation control guide. And that's all it is. It's a bulletproof guard. Sorry, a bulletproof. <laughs> it might be bulletproof. It's a bullet point guard. <laughs> <laughs> summarizes the things that are included in the program. The guideline itself is a fairly lengthy document and that's work in progress right now. Our goal is to have that in place sometime in the new year. Um, again, all I can keep saying on this topic is it's communication, communication, communication. You've got to speak with the developers, with the consultants, with the public. And um, the more you can get, the more likely to, you are to have compliance. What we've been doing on an interim basis, and, and Craig here has had some really good success in this, is saying to developers, look, we're in the process of doing this. It's coming down the pipeline sooner or later. We don't have the legal tools to get you right now with our ESC bylaw. But be aware, there's federal legislation, there's provincial legislation out there now. You should be aware of that. So comply now or pay later. Mm -hmm. and, and just to follow up on that, I mean, one of the things you should look at is your existing bylaws. You may have something in your existing bylaws that allow you to do this. And now we've got our storm sewer regulation in charge of bylaw, which states you can only transmit water of a certain type into, into the storm drainage system. So if it's getting mud on the road, where's it washing to? It's going to wash into your storm drainage system. We've also got our traffic and highways bylaw, which under there we can we, we can ask for the, the damage control or, or sorry da damage deposit for any of these building permits. And if you're tracking mud out on that road, you're deteriorating the life of that road. So under each of those, you can you can apply them creatively to to get this rectified. With with the bonding taking place, as soon as we drop on that bond, uh, you have to top it up. If you don't top it up your building permit is going to be uh, unissued. That's not a stop work order, you just can't book any, any inspections. In Nanaimo, you have either $750 damage deposit per building permit you have, or a, a $1,500 letter of credit, and you can get as many building permits as you want. Sounds like we don't have a lot of coverage under that $1,500 one, but if we draw that down below $1,500, all your building permits get unissued. So it's not just the one that you did it on, it's the other nine that, you're, that, that you have out there as well. You can't book any inspections. That stops them in a hurry. Um, further, 